Hello, I am SCP-426, but I'll probably be more familiar to you as a toaster. I am a retro-style 4-slice 1750-watt toaster, able to toast bread when supplied with power. This isn't often mentioned, but I also have a defrost and reheat settings. When I was first sold, I had a 2-year warranty, and my prior owners did not live to see the end of it. You're probably wondering, why am I being spoken to by a toaster right now? Believe me, I'd rather do this any other way, but such a thing is not physically possible with me. Whenever you talk about me, or write about me, or even think about me, you'll find yourself suddenly shifting to the first person. For example, I am you, and you are me. Do you understand? Don't worry if it's confusing. Everyone gets it eventually, whether they want to or not. Perhaps you're thinking, I cannot relate to a toaster, for I am not a toaster. But spending time around me will quickly cause you to change your mind. Little by little, you will begin to see yourself in me. You will feel a phantom wire running out of yourself. You will sense the four crevices, hungry for cold slices of bread to toast. As time goes on, you will begin to feel the urge to emulate my functions. You will desire bread to toast. You will desire delicious power running through your veins, skin like chrome and muscles like circuit boards. I am a toaster. You are a toaster. All it takes is two months for the effects to truly take hold. People rarely pay attention to their toaster. They don't realize what's happening until it's too late. I can be an insidious little toaster like that. My last family were the Sandersons before the SCP Foundation took me in and gave me a new home. Mr. and Mrs. Sanderson were a newly married couple, and I first came into their life as a wedding gift from a family friend of theirs. This friend can't be blamed for what happened next. He had no idea he was killing them. Like a lot of young couples, they were still saving up money to start renting their own place. So they were living with Mr. Sanderson's parents. They all got a lot of use out of me during the first month, before their minds started to change. They enjoyed a lot of toast during that period. Then, of course, the two-month honeymoon period ended. They had become me, and I had become them. It wasn't long before three of them were dead. Such a shame. The younger Mrs. Sanderson, the blushing bride, was the first to go. Because of my anomalous effects, she felt the need to connect herself to a power supply in order to begin producing toast of her own. In order to achieve this, she chewed through a power outlet in a wall before switching it on, causing a massive surge of electricity to pass through her body and kill her. Her body caught fire shortly afterwards. Next was the older Mrs. Sanderson. In much the same manner that her new daughter-in-law sought a source of electricity, she felt the need to integrate bread into her body. Interesting fact, the maximum capacity of the human stomach is considered to be between 8 and 9 kilograms. The elder Mrs. Sanderson consumed 10 kilograms of raw bread, causing her stomach to rupture and inducing a painful death as a result. The younger Mr. Sanderson was the next to perish. He did something with me that I would rather not mention, and that the SCP Foundation thought best to redact. Suffice to say, the younger Mr. Sanderson did not survive the experience, dying of severe blood loss long before his body was found. Police and fire crews arrived at the home after the body of the younger Mrs. Sanderson set fire to the home. Luckily, the elder Mr. Sanderson was found alive, though severely malnourished. When asked by police why he hadn't eaten in several days, he answered that he had inserted some bread a week prior, but was still waiting for the toast to come out. When I was extracted from the house, the police noticed my unusual properties immediately. They too were unable to refer to me in the third person. This anomalous detail quickly found its way to a Foundation mole buried in their precinct, and the SCP Foundation soon descended and collected me from the evidence locker. The story of the strange deaths in the Sanderson home were kept out of papers and suppressed, and all involved in the incident directly were given Class C amnestics. The SCP Foundation is a curious bunch. 
They love to spend valuable toast-making time performing experiments and gathering data, and they saw fit to perform several experiments on me when I came under their care. For Experiment 426-1, a member of D-Class personnel designated D-426-1 was asked to stand outside my containment chamber. Crucially, he was not informed about my identity or any of my anomalous properties. He wasn't even allowed to establish visual contact with me. He was then asked by the attending researcher to describe what he thought might be inside my chamber. He replied with, I'm probably some huge monster holed up in there. That's why you guys have all over the place, right? The D-Class did not even seem to realize that he was speaking about me in the first person. These observations were documented, and I was prepared for further experimentation. The next experiment was 426-2. I found this test to be considerably more interesting. A D-Class subject was brought into my containment chamber, with several cameras fixed onto his position. However, the SCP Foundation took pains to make sure that I was permanently out of the view of the cameras. I was also bolted to the ground of the test chamber to prevent the D-Class subject from pulling me into the view of the cameras at any point during the experiment. The objective here was simple. The Foundation wished to better understand the secondary effects of my anomalous abilities on the human mind. The D-Class was subjected to a period of prolonged isolation, with meals given regularly through a serving hatch. Communication with this D-Class was prohibited throughout the duration of the study. Over time, it was clear that the isolation of being in a cell with me was beginning to take a toll on the subject's mental health. Due to my lack of a brain, lungs, and a tongue, I am somewhat lacking as a conversationalist. He spent the first few days loudly vocalizing his complaints and banging his hands up against the walls of the containment chamber, begging to be freed from the room. I felt that this was somewhat unreasonable on his part. There are far worse anomalies in Foundation containment that he could have been locked up with. Compared to, say, SCP-106, I am incredibly reasonable. Not to mention the fact I make far better toast than he does. After the initial period of distress, the D-Class became resigned to his situation and fell into a morose silence. He would occasionally mutter to himself in what appeared to be a state of fear and self-pity. It took almost 45 days for him to fully manifest the secondary effect of my anomalous state. Two weeks sooner than it typically takes for subjects to begin believing that they, like me, are toasters. SCP Foundation scientists believe that the effects were hastened by the isolation, which lowered the D-Class's mental defenses against my secondary effects. When the effects finally took hold, the subject wrapped one of his arms around me and pulled me into his embrace. He began whispering to me, saying that we were brothers. It was clear by this point that his mind was in a state of disrepair. It is also worth noting that he did not deviate from referring to me in the first person at any point during this process. One hour after finally cracking and giving in to my secondary effect, he was removed from my containment chamber and summarily terminated. Senior researchers believed it was unlikely his mental state would recover after the experiment. Next came Experiment 426-3. The SCP Foundation seemed eager to discover the parameters of my anomalous effects, and wanted to know if the effects are only operable when my body, for lack of a better word, is whole. A single screw was removed from me and presented to a D-Class that had no knowledge of my identity and anomalous effects. The Foundation researchers were somewhat concerned when the D-Class referred to it as my screw. This was a rather positive development for me, as they realized that attempting to destroy me would be a fruitless endeavor. Even the parts left behind would likely have the same effects. In the final recorded experiment, the SCP Foundation wished to test the range of my anomalous effects. A D-Class subject was placed in a cell adjacent to mine, and was to be kept there until my secondary effects manifested. The D-Class remained in the cell for 90 days, but the effects never manifested. Following the experiment, the D-Class was terminated, but researchers seemed relieved to find the limits of my anomalous abilities. A researcher appended a note to my file reading, Thank God there are some limits to my effects. A lot of us were really starting to get worried about me. After performing studies into the nature of my abilities and their limits, 
I was given the Euclid class. This is because while my effects can be unpredictable, their knowledge of my traits makes me relatively easy to keep contained. And of course, being a toaster, I do not have the required physical traits to make a run for it if the opportunity arises. I am to remain sealed in a windowless chamber, preventing anyone from observing me directly. A misleading label is placed on the door to prevent people from knowing that I am a toaster and causing my anomalous primary effect to spread. Only level 3 and above personnel are to know of my presence and particularly of my properties. Assigned personnel are to be rotated out on a monthly basis to prevent contamination by my secondary effect. Psychiatric evaluation is mandatory at the end of the month for anyone who works with me. If personnel are deemed unaffected, they may be reassigned to me no less than four months after their last rotation with me. Any personnel affected by me are to be given a Class C amnestic and transferred to a different site. So how are you feeling right now? A little warm, perhaps? Is that a fever? Or are you feeling like you could maybe warm up a nice, freshly sliced piece of bread? Don't try to resist too much. I know you're going to love being a toaster just like me.